What's up everybody? Welcome back to Make It Custom. I'm Carl Fisher and this is a special episode because I'm not in my shop. I am out at Cornfield Customs in Cincinnati, Ohio, or actually Milford, Ohio, I guess. Really excited to be here and uh, hopefully gonna pick up a few tricks on using the power hammer for doing low crown panels. Uh, something that I have not done very much of, especially not with the power hammer. I've had the privilege of watching Bobby Walden do one in a previous class and uh, Today I will be using the Bailey Big Boy Power Hammer at Cornfield Customs and we are going to make a 32 Ford root pitch. Oop. Did you get that? We're making a 32 Ford roof insert. All right, so this is the buck that we're gonna be using. This is a, a fresh buck that he had just made uh, last week. The buck is very important. The buck tells you exactly how far along your panel is. Um, we'll be checking it multiple times on here. He's got it sorted down. He makes these quite a bit. He makes roof inserts for 32 Fords, 33, 34, and uh, there's a 36 coupe skin here. So he obviously does those as well. So um, he has a very, methodical way of doing it. Uh, I've seen Bobby Walden, he just sort of flies by the seat of his pants, he doesn't mark anything out and they all come out great. But uh, he's just got the feel of it and done thousands of skins, so he just goes for it. But uh, I really like the way that Mike goes about it because it's more repeatable and uh, when you can repeat something the same way each time, um, I believe it just, it makes it so that you have muscle memory. It, it makes it so that you can be consistent and, and repeatable. So he's got a template here already that has all these holes marked out for all the corners. Um, so this is kind of his master template so that I can copy that on a piece of sheet metal here, get that cut out, and uh, I can mark then all the patterns on there, which will be the patterns we follow to raise the crown of the skin. So basically, what we'll be doing is we'll be hammering in this area, and then we'll be hammering in this area, going over this area once more. Um, then we'll go to the number three, and we'll be hammering, you know, this one a second time, this one a third time. By the time we go to number four, then three will be hammered twice, two will be hammered three times, and the center will be hammered four times, and so on and so forth, so that, um, Basically, the center will need more stretch than the areas moving outwards. And uh, if you remember some of the other videos that we've done when we're talking about shrinking, stack shrinking as well, uh, making compound curves, there is always more shrink to the edge than there is in the center. So this will all make more sense as we go along, but uh, that is kind of a rule of thumb is if you were to just stretch evenly, um, a whole panel, it would just kind of get bigger. It wouldn't actually grow. Uh, so the center will need more stretch than the layers moving outwards if we're stretching. Um, the outside will need more shrink than the layers moving inwards if we're shrinking. And uh, that's kind of a rule of thumb that you can remember and keep in mind when we're doing this or shrinking. So um, as I understand it, that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna cut that out right now, mark it all out, and we'll get ready. Mike will be back from the shop. Uh, he just took his ambulance to the garage, I guess, for some glow plugs. And when he gets back, he's gonna show us and uh, I'm gonna give this a try. We are gonna need these skills for the Zephyr, especially now that a lot of you have noticed I've got the big boy power hammer in the back. That's what that's for. This is Mike. Hey, what's you up? Don't, you don't know Mike? 
Cornfield Customs. You should know him. He has a YouTube channel. I learned tons from it. You will too. Lots of good step-by-step -step tricks. I'm sure he's going to show us a trick or two with just hand snipping these things out right now. Yeah, I'm pretty particular on the way I, uh, I snip things and hold things. So... Notice he's using them kind of upside down from the way you'd normally do it. They're just ergonomically better that way. I, I find that also. One difference between me and Mike is we've got different ways of using Sharpies. Something that he taught in the class, it makes a lot of sense, is they use like a really fine line Sharpie for trimming with the snips. And uh, you've heard me say before on the channel that I'll, I'll just, I don't care how thick it is, I, I go from where the edge of the Sharpie meets the, uh, you know, meets the metal, but uh, it doesn't really, I guess it doesn't matter to each their own, but it makes more sense this way because you don't get any bleed through or any kind of, you're not, not uh, I don't know, you're not guessing, you're not able to wander. Yeah, my problem is that I'll see the line and I'll get off a little bit and I'll migrate in and I'll just be like, ah, when I get to the inside, I'll bounce back and then you still get waves. So if I do that on an ultra fine Sharpie, that uh, margin for error is extremely small. I'm also very picky and finicky. using he makes these and I've never seen them anywhere else they're genius they uh, it's just like a little what, what kind of file are those uh, an auto body or a vixen file vixen file so you've seen these on like the flexible files and stuff like that the uh, um, you can kind of tighten a crank and, and, and get a different uh, shape on them yeah such so yeah. a large vixen he's got these handheld little glue in vixen files for deburring genius I'm definitely buying one all right, now that we're all laid out and snipped up, about to start making some noise. Yep. Um, I've got a lot to learn here, so I'm gonna try and ask as many questions too so that we know exactly what's going on. So what kind of tooling do we have on here right now? Is it a 36? Yep, 24? 36 inch lower and a flat top upper uh, anvil or tool. Got it. All right, and the I, I kind of briefly washed over it um, to the best of my knowledge, but the, uh, the process of doing a low crown panel and the way that you've laid them out on the templates is we're just going to start from the center out and uh, go over the smallest square first and then it'll be twice over the center one when we go to the next and, and so on and so forth. Is yep. that... Yeah, I try to be really methodical on the way I lay everything out instead of just going at it, hopefully not kind of loose and wild. But if you start in the middle, um, well, I'll backtrack. So aggressive compound shape, like in a roof insert or a door skin, um, you're gonna have way more stretch in the center of the panel than you will at the edges. And that's what's gonna help you grow that compound shape. So by starting in the center, and we go over the center patch first, and then we move out to one, crossing over the center, number one will be stretched once while the center is stretched twice. And then we go to two, two will be once, once will be twice, and the center will be three times. So by doing the same amount of work, same amount of time holding the panel, we're getting exponential growth by starting in the middle, working our way out, constantly washing over. And now when, uh, when it gets to the point of, like, I'm, I'm sort of jumping ahead, but when it gets to the point of uh, fitting, like, it, it's not always going to be a shape that's that consistent, right? So, like, we'll do that and, and check the buck, and then at some point, there will be coming back to certain areas because the roof isn't a dead perfect bubble? Or? Uh, maybe yes, maybe no. Maybe so yes, maybe no. Uh, it depends on how your uh, hammer control and your pattern work is. So usually like in my notebook, I've got that you should do the grid pattern over it two to three times on an aluminum insert and then you should be like 90% on the buck. Right. It's just gonna be if you get an inconsistency from your motor control or if there's an inconsistency in the material. But the shape should be spot on due to our layout. And if we do a, a pattern that has, like say a 30, uh, 35, 36, there's more shape in the back of the roof 
So when I grid that out, the center is actually migrated towards the back. I understand. So now. the center block is where the majority of the shape actually needs to occur, not necessarily the center of the panel itself. I got it. So that that grid pattern would look totally different um, on this skin yes. versus this one. This yep. would actually be further back. Yeah. So that yeah. This would be approximately in this location because you have so much more crown here at the back on a 3536. Okay, that makes sense. That totally answers my question. This is the big Bailey power hammer. He's got like a petting old hammer here. Um, but this one, I suppose, uh, is a very hard hitting hammer and yep. it's set up differently than other hammers. So this particular setup, um, how are we setting up the dies to know that we're in the right location? Um, so I'll, I'll just put the dies down. So in the up position of our lower anvil and at the farthest down stroke of our upper, we want a quarter to three sixteenths of an inch of tool gap. And then I've set our stroke up at about three to three and a half, roughly three and a quarter. Um, that's just a little number scale that I wrote on there so I can uh, easily repeat this. And then our RPM is set roughly about four uh, on our potentiometer speed limit switch. So you're, you, you already know exactly where it's gonna be. So it's, it, I guess it makes it a little bit more foolproof. So you can actually full throttle that pedal during this. Uh, I'm still gonna feather it. Okay. Um, as I cross over from like say grid, we get to the end of each grid, I'm gonna let off the pedal a little bit so it feathers out, that way we don't have a hard stop start line. It kind of blends those lines outward into one another. Okay. So you'll, you'll see me pumping the pedal and I'm just feathering in and out. Um, but yeah, we can, we can go from zero to wide open. Gotcha. like you did two passes on everything all at once, right? Because your notes were saying do two passes, so. Well, it's, uh, so it's, I call it one full pass. So we would start here and we'd work all the way down and then all the way back and then jump out. To me, that's one pass down and back. Oh, okay. Yeah. So now we'll just kind of rough test it to our buck and see how far off we are. So we've got that looseness around the edge. So if we do one more pass, it should tighten that up quite a bit. And uh, we can, if you wanna see how much shape we've put in it, just that pass alone, I'm just putting a little tension on it with my hand, but we've put that much shape in it both directions. Wow, looks super consistent in the camera too, like the light lines that are crossing over it from all the fluorescent bars. Yeah, and you may have seen me like come back like kind of out of pattern. Like I would just jump somewhere real quick. I was using the light and if I would see a low spot while I was in there, I'd just come knock it up. Gotcha. One more full grid like that should bring it in and it'd, it'd be really close. Maybe just a little bit of edge work. All right, I guess I'm up next. I'm gonna give this a shot. Gonna try and mimic exactly what I saw there. And uh, it, you know, that's a machine, but, but that's also a machine. He was yeah. holding on to that thing for over 10 minutes like with good motor control. So we'll see, I don't know. Yeah, but uh, on twins. here, it's all here. Oh yeah? Yeah, I mean, you could see that I would hold it like that and then I would bring my arms in and then I would move my hands and then pull it to my chest. That's giving each, each arm a chance to take a break at a certain area. Got it, got yeah. it. 
Those are a lot of things to think about. I'm just gonna try and get through it. Yeah. <laughs> Bring on the pain, right? Bring on the pain. So I saw you're your basically like, if, 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 it, if you know, that was your contact patch, were you over, trying to overlap those? Yeah, about 50%. 50% overlap. Yeah. I wanted to turn the machine up so bad to get a little bit more RPM out of it so I could move faster, but I started with that RPM, so I wasn't gonna change it until we did one full pass everywhere. Got because it. if you change your RPM halfway through, your feed rate's gonna change, your stretch is gonna change. So with whatever we start with at the beginning is what you're gonna end up with all the way through. Gotcha. I know my foot is not connected to my brain right now. Yeah. <laughs> I'm lifting in all the wrong spots. But. And then you, you jump right out to the outside. I kind of feather my way out. One thing that'll help too, like in consistency, is never stop. Never stop, yeah. Because like the problem is like now you've stopped yeah. in the middle of a panel, if you have to stop, right. keep moving the panel like just randomly all over until like, you know, just kind of feather it out. That way you're not just like, stop. Gotcha. Okay. Did you lose track of where you were? No, I, I stopped right at this corner. Okay. Yeah, it, it was because I wasn't sure if I had to traverse back, but I always have to traverse back to the top yep. to finish what I was doing because it's down and up for one, right? Got it. Couple little wobblies in there, but yeah. we'll mark them. My arms are still here. Yeah. Front, front. Man, it's so close. It's pretty close. Unreal. So, where would you go from here for like fine tuning stuff? Um, what like, I what, would what, do. What do you see? I mean, it fits really nice. It's a little loose just around the edges. So what I would do first is we would wipe all of this off with uh, alcohol, get all of the oil off the top, the markings off the top, and then we'll use a paper towel as a tactile uh, amplifier, and we'll find all the low spots, high spots, and we'll mark them. And then just one quick planish pass over the top other than those uh, areas we find, and we'll address them as we go. Have okay. you used a... Uh, a tactile amplifier towel before? No, I don't know what that is. Okay, well, let's clean this off and I'll, I'll show you. Sounds good. So dragging my hand like this way and just Yep, like your it? feel, like body work, like feeling for imperfections. So the problem is, is the friction between the surface and your hand gives you false readings or non-readings because you feel it sticking. Right. So now do the same thing with that towel. Whoa. You can feel everything because there's no friction. So I've never heard of this yeah. before ever. Isn't that wild? That, I, I thought you had some kind of magical towel. No, that's not. <laughs> this is just paper towel. Just a but paper towel. I, like I did feel something, but I can feel exactly where it is You can now. feel where it is, how deep it is, every wave ripple, you can feel everything. Yeah, there's like a, a definite low right here. It kind of continues. Yeah, and we can check that with sweeps too. I pulled them out, so we've got them. Yeah, this paper towel trick, it'll, uh, it'll save you a lot of aggravation if you're nitpicking little spots that you can't quite diagnose. Unreal. Yeah, I, I would have never thought. Yeah. Uh, I mean, all I can really feel is like, is, is like a low kind of in yeah. here, like these two are higher than, than yeah. that spot. You want to feel it, Dom? Yeah, so just drag your hand across it dry like you're trying to feel for low spots, like kind of palm, yeah, like that. You can feel something, but you don't know what it is. Now try it with a paper yeah. towel. Oh, wow. yeah. yeah. It's a tactile amplifier. Like, <laughs> it, it opens everything up. <laughs> the tactile amplifier towel. Yeah. You can buy these on the website. They're 10 bucks. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's a double, so it's 20, right? Ah, uh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> so I guess next step now is like, like I guess you're going to feel it. Yeah. You'll probably feel more than we do. Yeah, so like there's... There's a low spot here.
we might have a little bit too much shape in it. Oh, so the high is, I guess the low is reading as a high? No, it's, it's touching the buck. So we have our low spot marked here. And if we take our spline, you can see there's very little light gap and just dragging it over it, you can see the low present itself. Right. And then go away right where we have it marked. And we can do that on every one of them. And is it meant to kind of scuff so that you can you, see? You can. I don't know if they designed it that way, but especially on aluminum, it'll scratch it a little bit, which is a little bit of a, a little bit of a bummer if you're wanting to go polished, but it is what it is. Yeah, like there you can see it really well. So will you be like washing these in? I'll the hit hammer? them. For, I'll hit them first. Yeah. Raise them up a little bit, and then we'll wash the whole pattern or the whole panel real quick. It all comes out in the wash. It all comes out in the wash. I'm gonna turn the stroke down just a little bit so it won't hit quite as hard. And then I'll turn our RPM up and we'll blend the whole panel. So sometimes just holding it the way we do, we'll put a little bit of form in there, which is what I think that is, because it's here and here. Right. So now I'm just gonna rotate it and do a quick wash, holding it the other way, so if there's a little bit of form trapped in it, it'll let that go and hopefully it'll just snap into place. Just You're just talking about the droop as you're yep. running it through the machine. Yeah, it could trap a little bit of that form from where it droops through. Gotcha. And one note I wanted to make, um, when I'm running it, I'm not looking at what the die's doing. I'm keeping track of my track patterns, but I'm watching the light. So like, you'll see me like jump around to a new spot. Like I'll be over here and all of a sudden I'm over here. It's cause I could see something funky going on in the light. And I would come over and bring that light line up and then go back to what I was doing. Very interesting point because I don't think anybody could ever see that by watching this. So that makes a lot of sense. Cause I, I did see you jump around a little bit. Yeah, and, and you're uh, probably like, why is he doing that? Yeah. I would just see like a little, so what we're doing is adjusting the light. So we'll just say, this is what our light line is supposed to look like. I don't know if you can see that grease line, but. Oh yeah, yeah. Then if we get one that does this, I can see that by the reflection of the lights in the ceiling and the lights on the machine. So I'll come over and I'll adjust it until I get that light line dialed in. And then I'll go back to what I was doing. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So let's kind of do a planish pass with it turned 90 degrees, and I think we'll be in the ballpark there. This is all going to be very important this winter when we're doing the Zephyr roof. So it's where it's all coming together. How's she fitting? Uh, it fits better on the other buck. Uh, when we were putting it on, um, I noticed that it was overhanging quite a bit. So when I make our patterns, I make them about three quarters oversized what the roof insert needs to be. So the good thing, uh, we didn't make any mistakes. So a 33, 34, three and five window is almost the same shape as a 32, three or five window. Gotcha. The panel's just slightly bigger. So we had all that overhang and I'm like, let's just see what it looks like on this one. And there's the buck. 
and it snaps and it, right and it just to it. Lays right in place. You know, we don't. It's not twisted. It's not hung up. Doesn't have any dings or dents in it. Yep. And it. We did the paper towel trick, and it felt pretty nice. I was happy. Ooh. I mean, in camera though, it looks like this is like a polished Bugatti right now. Oh yeah. <laughs> but it, yeah, it looks perfect, man. Yeah, and if we wanted to bring this finish up. Um, we could put it in the Milwaukee air planisher with a very low pressure and make sure everything's clean, oil-free, um, no lubricant, and just lightly planish it, and it'll burnish that right up without changing the shape much. Wow. So we could run off of the edge, so if we do build any shape, it'll relax it off. But we could get this thing up to a, a mirrored finish if we really wanted to. But you, you, would, you would never really need to for this, would you? Or I, mean, I, I guess... If you, if you were doing a polished car. one, yeah. yeah. But like 99% of these are either gonna get louvers or they're gonna get louvers and painted or they're just gonna get left for all. Have, so, you, have you done like polished ones that you send out as polished? Like I that? don't send them out as polished. No. But they'll say me it's going to be a polished piece. So like I'll be really mindful not to get any of these scratches. Right. So even like with this little bit of scratch, usually what I do from here is I'll take a, a red Scotch-Brite pad on a DA and I'll just lightly go over the whole thing, get it nice, even, consistent and it, it would be a wrapped up panel ready to ship to the client. Epic. Well, I'm, I'm happy that it's not ruined for me, like yeah. messing around on it. No. Nah. And well, that's a good thing is like, you have to keep in mind that from flat sheet to finished part, you're doing, like this is all radial stretch. So if you overdo it, you just let the radial stretch out and relax the center back down. If you put a dent in it, it's only metal, knock the dent back out blend it around, and if you put too much shape in it blending it, then just let it go. So if we did overstretch this yep. radial stretch, to let that back out, would you just radial stretch the edge yep. as well? Like you wouldn't go to linear or nope. anything, it would just be, you would just be radial stretching closer to the yep. edge you, trying to... Well, you do it in reverse, so um, I have to break things down into simple terms. The only thing we have done to take this from flat to compound shape is radial, and mm -hmm. focusing in the center working our way out. So if we overdo it and we want to undo that, we start at the edge, working our way in, and we can blend off of that edge to relax that out. Gotcha. So it's, you don't want to jump in with linear because we didn't do any linear work, so we don't need to do any linear to let it go, and that'll start uh, making this go into a reverse. I learned a lot. I hope you guys did too. Yeah, for sure. And uh, definitely check out Mike's channel, Cornfield Customs, um, Instagram, Facebook, all the socials. He's on there. He's active. He answers questions, comments, uh, tons of really good stuff, step by step, like the terms you've heard today. It's very easy to follow. Um, yeah, thanks a lot, man. Yeah, no problem. It's been a hell of an experience yeah, out here. We're doing good classes time. out here, like this two back-to-back -back classes that we're doing together in the shop. And, uh, and we're doing a podcast uh, this week. And we're doing a podcast this week with uh, the Hot Rod Kid, Noah, yep. Mike, and myself. Uh, so definitely check that out and uh, like and subscribe. Thanks a lot, everybody. Yep, see you later. Catch you on the next one.